Unshira torque them so we can spin the thing. <laughs> We're lubed. <laughs> That's it. I'm out of here. <laughs> okay. So, important note to remember, make sure the bolt goes toward the inboard of the car or you'll be taking it back apart again. For the fourth time. <laughs> Using one of my paint sponges? No, that has to be <laughs> the kids. I didn't do that. Sure. Is that a paint sponge? It is. I just want to take a second here in the very front of this video to remind you guys stick around till the end um, we'll cover things like the part number uh, how difficult was it really to install uh, did it actually fix the car and, and what we're gonna do next so be sure to stay till the end we'll also give you a link to another cool video it said direct fit but they never direct fit either. let's talk rear suspensions so as you know I've had some issues with the Z28 as far as uh, rear suspension setup. It looks like we had a bunch of mix matched parts. Uh, and I'll get into what I mean by that in a few minutes. But for rear suspension, there's two basic types. You have the four link and you have leaf springs. So um, four links date way back into the, gosh, my 65 was a four link. Um, actually, the 65 is actually a really good example, and I'll tell you why. So if you're looking down on the rear end from the top, you have the rear axle. There's your drive shaft. So you have bars that connect the rear end to the frame. The Impala had one here. If you got a small block car, if you got a big block car, the factory threw in a second one. There's your four links. Now you can see that would be really weak in side to side motion. So Chevrolet gave you a panhard bar. This hooked onto the frame rail, that hooked onto the rear axle, that kept the axle from moving side to side. These four bars allowed the rear, end, rear suspension to go completely through its arc. That was first generation. You'll see this under a lot of modern drag cars. This works really well. However, in an effort to reduce parts down the road, manufacturers wanted to eliminate all these pieces. So we'll get into second generation of four link rear suspensions. You have your axle again. Let's say 5 -0 Mustang. So you have the same lower bars, correct? But they put ears on top of the axle here and they triangulated the upper bars. So now you can see you're eliminating the side to side movement and you don't have this extra piece. So this is four link suspension. You can change instant center by moving these bars. Instant center would be the center of gravity of the vehicle the further forward you get it, the less likely the car is to wheelie. Uh, that, that's all drag racing stuff. We're not uh, really getting into that at this point. So on top of this, where's your spring purchase? So your coil springs are here that set ride height while this controls movement. This is four link, four link. Four bars, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, leaf spring suspensions, like the Super B, like the Camaro. Matter of fact, like the C10. Pretty much everything we own except the 5.0 Mustang is leaf springs these days. So, leaf spring suspensions attack 
the rear suspension problems in an entirely different way. So, leaf spring. is very similar. Rear axle. However, you have long, usually multi-layer springs that attach to the rear axle. Now, twofold. These also set ride height by their arch. So you eliminate the springs. They also control side to side movement because they're a huge pack of quarter inch plate steel, uh, spring steel, riveted together usually. So you can see a lot less parts. However, now that your coil spring is this long, you can imagine it flexes and moves and twists. So while this is ideal for traction, way fewer parts and way cheaper to manufacture, this is not so ideal. So, um, Let's get into what happens when you try to accelerate with leaf springs, because that's what we're dealing with with the Z28. My big Christmas box. I'm not gonna tell you what came in it yet, but I'm gonna rotate this around to a fresh, clean sheet of paper here. So what we wanna go over is side view of leaf springs, right? So. You're looking at the side view of the car. Here's your wheel. Here's your pinion, part that connects to your drive shaft. And here is your leaf. Um, usually multi leafs. Right? So you can see big distance there. Now, Mopars are shorter in the front. Chevrolets are pretty much even. They're all different. Uh, that's why a Mopar won't respond as well to uh, Caltrax bars as, as a GM car will with the distance. So what you're trying to maximize is traction. So as your tires spin this way, physics, your ring gear wants to climb the pinion, so your rear axle wants to go this way. That will pull the front of this spring up and actually S this spring. So, depending on how worn out, how old your springs are, they can snap pretty far, and then when they finally reach their full tension and they snap back, that's when the burnout starts. So you may have launched nice and hard off the line and got, you know, eight or nine feet out, and then they go up in smoke. That's what happened. So here comes 1962 technology, slapper bars. So slapper bars bolt onto the pad at the bottom where the leaf spring bolts onto the axle. Now what they did is they ran a heavy duty quarter inch plate steel up to the front and they give you a fully adjustable piece of rubber here to contact your spring. What happened there, you can see, instead of that spring being able to go up, that rod, bam, hit the spring, stopped the pinion gear from climbing the ring gear, stopped axle rotation, now you didn't have that snapback traction. Now they worked, they worked pretty good. Um, matter of fact, the Super B still has a set on it. They were on it in the junkyard. They're probably 40 years old. I think they were chrome at one point, but um, cars kept getting faster and faster and more horsepower and more horsepower. So this works up to a certain point. Um, new design, Calvert Racing, came out with what they call Caltrax bars. So, same setup. You have your wheel, you have your pinion, you have your leaf spring. There's your front bushing bolted there, just like the top. So, a Caltrax bar has a heavy duty quarter inch plate steel bracket that bolts onto the bottom here and picks up your axle mounts. A healthy chromoly tube that runs up to the front just like a slapper bar. However, you press this rubber bushing out, you press in a solid aluminum bushing. And what goes on there is like a, it's like a triangulated piece looks like this. So now this rod goes up and attaches into that. So now 
as the rear end wants to spin and the chromoly rod wants to go forward, it pushes this on a lever. You can tune the air gap between this pin and the top of the leaf spring to stop that movement. You can fully tune this rod. So you can control how much spring flex you have. Um, you can tune a car that leaves the line and goes right, goes left. Uh, Caltrax bars are what's on the Camaro. You've seen those. Um, they work really well. They highly recommend you go to a single mono spring. Modern day springs, mono springs are much lighter, uh, much less resistant to wear and also tunable. Whereas this big spring pack would be hard to tune depending on track conditions. So uh, this allows maximum traction for drag racing. However, let's say you want to autocross. Now you're going right and left and you're only loading one side of the car versus the other. This spring needs to compress. That rear axle needs to move right and left to hold the inside tire on the ground. Um, so these will actually cause oversteer if you try to use them in a road race situation. So um, that's why uh, we've chosen to go the route we have on the Camaro. So let's recap. Slapper bars, only tunable by the rubber snubber, help eliminate axle wrap on medium, low to medium horsepower cars on the street. Caltrax bars, much more serious, much more tunable, uh, very serious high horsepower cars. Seven second street cars run these. However, you eliminate that rubber bushing and you run this metal bracket that slams into the spring as you tune it. These are very noisy on the street. Um, if you're concerned about how fast your car is, you don't care, but if you want something that's comfortable when you turn on the radio, go down the road, uh, you're gonna want this setup. Global West actually makes leaf springs that tilt. Uh, they're called Cat5, they have a Del, Del Alum bushing in the front and rear, and they say that in a road race or autocross situation, the springs are allowed to rotate and help plant the inside tire. That's the biggest problem on, uh, in autocrossing is that inside tire especially if you've got a car that's um, you know, not posi traction and you've got a little bit of horsepower, you come out of a corner, the inside tire just wants to spin because you've unloaded it effectively. So that's where a matched front and rear suspension comes into play. In drag racing, not so much a big deal because as long as it's light and the car weight transfers, it's gonna go. But in a road race situation, you need to get that horsepower to the ground when the rear end is half unloaded. So you need the, a front suspension that's matched as far as spring rates, uh, sway bar rates, bushing, deflection. So there's a lot to consider. Most companies nowadays sell a full package. I went with Hotchkiss. Uh, I like their stuff. I think the Camaro has just about everything Hotchkiss makes on it uh, for the F body. Um, and then for a street and strip guy who wants a car to do everything, you'd pick and choose out of this setup what you like, what you consider comfortable. Um, some, guy don't, some guys might not mind a Caltrax bar slapping the leaf springs every time you hit a bump or a pothole, but I don't really want that. I, you know, I want a car that's fast and fun and uh, comfortable. So that's just an overview on rear suspensions. Help you understand what's going on. Let me show you the route we're going to go. I just wanted to pull you guys aside before we started the uh, installation and show you this kit. So um, I called up Hotchkiss and said, hey, I need to get this thing on the road. Uh, I want to start enjoying this car I bought. So they suggested these components here I'm going to show you. Uh, this is part of the total vehicle packages they have. Uh, the car pretty much has everything else. It's got the subframe connectors, front and rear sway bars. Uh, it's got the front drop springs. It's got the I always forget what they're called. The braces under the hood that brace the subframe to the firewall. So the only thing the car would be missing would be the uh, Hotchkiss' own adjustable shocks, but and we'll probably get there someday. But so the kit they sent me, uh, the highlight of the kit is these 
these right here. So these are two and a half inch drop rear leafs. You can see they got the progressive rate in them. There at the bottom, the short one. Uh, they got polyurethane bushings pressed into the front. Uh, they got these massive shackles in the back with polyurethane bushings, grade eight hardware. Another set of, you know, we've already been here, right? So another set of those, the same of these. So they sent another set of these. Um, they do have locking nylon nuts on them, which are nice, but I'll pick whether I want to use theirs or my grade eight ones. Um, the cool thing about this kit is this is all the hardware to put the forward spring cup in. Brand new bolt, all the hardware that clips into the car, the little clips, grade eight bolts, washers, and they even give you a little bit of lube. This one says energy suspension. I'm sure they're in cahoots somehow. Um, so this kit uh, is complete for the back of the car. However, being the fact that I had Caltrax bars in there, I didn't have the lower uh, shock plate, the, uh, the part that these go through to support the car. So I reached out to Summit Racing and they sent me these. These are OERs, exact duplicate of the originals. Uh, the cool part is the locating pin fits perfectly in there, whereas the old ones did not. So that's kind of nice. Uh, also, the upper fits this large, this thing has a very, very large pin on it. So let me get the important stuff out of the way here before I spill it. So there's no play there, unlike, you know, you saw before. So, uh, I think this is a much better setup. I'm looking forward to getting this in the car, um, hopefully this week, that'd be great. Maybe get have it back on the road by the weekend. So that's there you go. That's just an overview of the parts that are going in. Uh, again, this is Hotchkiss. This is top quality stuff. So you can see I've got the old setup completely out of the car. Uh, you have to press that aluminum bushing in up there. So we're going to go ahead and let these go as a complete assembly. I think these will bolt into any second gen Camaro or Nova of certain years. I'm not... 100% sure but interesting thing when we went to pull the shock apart this nut right here completely froze and caused the assembly to come apart I tried vice grips you can see that didn't work uh, so to sweeten the deal whoever buys these gets a free set of Edelbrock shocks Woohoo! just because these spring cups are in excellent shape doesn't mean we can't hit them with some PHT caliper paint, it's got to be good, right? Yeah, nice. It's the good stuff. <laughs> God, you're killing me. Now we're moving on to the assembly and installation of the leaf springs. Uh, this is, I think, part three of the Camaro. Um, so we have our leaf spring and our leaf cup, and we're gonna grease it and put it together. Pretty simple, right? You're probably gonna have to tap that down with the hammer. Okay. Oh, what? Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> He said, it doesn't come with directions. <laughs> Did you hide it back here? What is this? Um, this 
This is small block Chevrolet gasket set. <laughs> Wrong car. <laughs> Why are you using the sponge? Because you've already ruined it. I might as well use it. But isn't it the perfect tool? Kind of. It's the perfect tool. They're just spun wrong. So you need to Put them un wrong. unshira torque them so we can spin the thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is not that big of a setback. So they just clip in like that, like so. Okay. So the nut goes up on the inside. Might need a tiny little hammer. A tiny Not a tiny dancer. That one clipped right in. Oh, that's the only one I can't get in. <laughs> Give you a better angle. <laughs> Can you see that? That's because you're doing it wrong, dummy. It, you do it upside down again? No. <laughs> Funny how when you put them in the right way, they go right in. Right, so the issue is this is too tall to fit inside the slot in the body. I'm just gonna knock that down a touch on the grinder. Ooh. Well, you gotta spin the cup. The cup's way tilted up. There you go. Mm -hmm. This is not right. No, this is not right at all. Oh, maybe they are installed backwards. <laughs> Why is it so complicated? Because they were put on upside down. So what'd you do? <laughs> so... You can't... There's no good way to do this. They gotta come off. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> Tip number three. So it's very important that you have the spring in the orientation it's going to be in the car before you attempt to mount the spring cups, otherwise you put them in backwards and upside down. So, now we need to tap that one back in place. For sure. Yes. This is it. This is the right way. This is it. Okay, we finally got the first part of assembly done. And now we have to put the shackles in. As you can see, this is what the old ones look like. You can see they're way bigger. And, well, it was crap. So we're gonna put some new stuff in it. And we gotta get this all assembled and we'll show you as we go. So we're gonna get it all lubed up with this Formula, Formula 5, five. pre-lube. 
that they gave us. This wee little bit. So. Is it like magic lube? Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> po polyurethane squeaks really bad if you don't lube it correctly. And like your son's truck. <laughs> okay. So. Put some on the inside like so. Okay. And on the outside? Or just the inside? I don't know. We didn't come with directions. But I'm going to assume anywhere polyurethane is touching the body. So we'll press these up through the uh, frame of the car. Like I said, there's no directions. <laughs> okay. Take two. At least I noticed it now. <laughs> this is true. There's one in here. Pull it up. Get mad at it. Really? Son of a monkey. All right, so now that's on, we'll be okay. able to go back <laughs> to putting the rear end in. Again. Again. We went ahead and got the lower shock plates torqued in. So uh, we use the Hotchkiss half inch U-bolts with lock nuts. Uh, you will have to drill these four holes up to half inch. Uh, if you're replacing stock components. We already had done that with the Caltrax U-bolts, so everything just went right in. Torqued in real nice. The rear end is finally a part of the car again. So here we are, back on jack stands. Uh, you'll notice I'm bundled up a little bit today. Uh, it's a balmy 40 degrees here in coastal Georgia. Uh, I know you northern guys will be rolling your eyes at me, but it was 81 on Sunday. So a 40 degree drop is quite substantial for us. So I'm out here, I uh, had to turn the heater off so you could hear me. Uh, but anyway, here we are. So, uh, I think we have a plan of attack, finally. Uh, I feel like an idiot. Uh, I think it's very simple what's wrong with the car. Uh, unfortunately, my whole life I've been around full frame cars, like, uh, you know, Chevelles, um, Impalas, even the design like the, the Super B and 5.0 Mustangs, the, the front core support and inner fenders are part of the structure. So I've never owned a car like this where the front subframe comes off, like a Camaro, Firebird, Nova. Uh, didn't even dawn on me. When the car was, was having the handling issues, I immediately thought the rear end was the problem. I never thought the front could be off. So, but we were gonna put all those parts in the car anyway. You know, we're, we're trying to build a track warrior here. So, uh, I jumped online and some of you guys chimed in and said, 
check the front subframe alignment holes and I had, I had to go search that out, find what those are. Apparently there's some 5 8 holes right next to the middle bolts, uh, right behind the front wheel there, that uh, they sell some rig pins you can stick in there and, and make sure your front end's aligned. Well, these are off a half a bolt hole. Effectively the whole front end is in there like this. So you can see, as you're going down the road under power, when the weight's on the rear of the car, there's no issue, but as soon as you let off, these want to straighten up. You can see that kicks the rear of the car over. So uh, I think we're finally on the right track. So I'm going to go ahead and try to figure out how to move the subframe over. It's, it's only a half a bolt hole. I'm going to probably run up to Harbor Freight and buy a, a plumb bob and a magnetic level and a pry bar that comes down to a point so I can put it up in the hole and, and maybe help pry stuff around. Uh, I'll have to unbolt the front of the subframe connectors. They pick up the rear subframe mount bolts. Uh, so we'll walk you through that. Um, probably not going to be fun, but the car, you can't drive the car. It seems like one of you F-Body guys would have chimed in and told me to check that a long time ago. Not blaming you, just saying. Okay, so here's the part of the video where we're gonna get serious for a minute and tell you what it really took to install these. Um, I, I got the kit from Summit Racing. It was around 600 bucks shipped. Uh, the part number is 2408 Charlie. That's the one and a half inch drop springs. Um, if you got a Firebird, it's 2409 Charlie. I'm not sure about the part number for the three inch drop. I didn't look that up, but uh, all in all, it had everything we need. Uh, you can see from the video, two very inexperienced people with leaf springs can install them, no problem. Um, didn't really need any special tools. Um, I joked a little bit, but actually they don't come with directions because all the directions are free online. You just go uh, download them and print them out if you really need directions. All in all, wasn't that expensive, wasn't that hard to install. I'm looking forward to really getting out on the road and trying it out. but. We're still in the air, so stay tuned. Obviously, there'll be another video. Uh, I know you Mopar guys are patiently waiting. We have uh, all kinds of stuff to do the Super B. You know, we have a list for Power Tour. I have everything sitting on the table over there to completely go through the rear end, show you how to change the rear axle bearings yourself. You had to switch over to the green bearings, get away from the factory tapers with the adjustment thing that's really weird on the end there. So. We got some cool stuff coming up. Um, trying to get this dang Camaro on the road before the end of winter. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. That way you'll get a notification when the next video comes out. Uh, check us out on the Facebook page at the Family's Garage and at the Instagram page, Family's Garage. Thanks, guys.